Hey, how much money did your sales team bring in last week? Gosh, sometimes a really hard question to answer depending on how you track those metrics. We can't just look at our Stripe account. We can't just look at our bank account. Maybe we can look at our CRM if it's using the right way. Maybe we use Google Sheets to track all of our money and our deals, but that also takes that manual oversight. And what I'm gonna show you today inside of tracking income, dollars, installments, missed payments inside of a closed.com account will take some manual insight. If you're gonna track it, somewhere, track it inside of your CRM, where all your customer data is, where all your info is. Inside of the CRM, being able to visualize it in this Kanban view, being able to filter the way you can filter inside of close.com, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Different businesses have different structures to how they collect payments. Some of them are retainer models and maybe charge X thousand dollars a month for a year or for six months. Some businesses are software businesses where it's a recurring monthly subscription with no end date in sight. Some businesses, is, has sell products that are $10,000 and you can pay $5,000 down and then you can pay $2,500 in a month and $2,500 in two months. There's a lot of nuances to each business. I hope what I'm going to show you today inside of close.com inside of building a finance pipeline can still spark something that will be applicable to your business. And I promise if you have someone that puts eyes on this every single day inside of your business, whether it's you for five minutes, 10 minutes, someone else on your team, a virtual assistant, a finance department, admin department. Someone puts eyes on this every single day to keep this part of your CRM clean. You're going to thank yourself in the future. But before we get into the video, my boss makes me tell you that my name's Sam Queen. Some people like to call me the clothes doctor and I help service-based businesses with high ticket offers scale to seven and eight figures using my systems-based selling strategies. We do this by placing a sales operator within your business to focus on lead integrity. So no leads slip through the cracks, data integrity. So you could see every stat for every sale and time integrity, those workflows and automations. You can find videos on my channel about how to build those inside of clothes.com so we can keep your sales reps on the phone selling. Now let's Let's get into my close.com account. Here is a dev environment that I have inside of a close.com account. And what you see on your screen right now is a sales pipeline right here. Boom, sales. And I want to break down why I call it a sales pipeline and then why I call a finance pipeline a finance pipeline, which I'm about to show you. And a lead profile may have both on there for a closed deal. And that is a sales pipeline is going to track a sale lead through the sales process from potential lead to booking a triage call that call be completed, not completed, booking a strategy session completed, not completed, that strategy session or that demo call lost or that deal getting signed up. So this is following the deal through the sales process from a top line revenue standpoint. So all of these numbers, all of these dollar amounts here are top line revenue dollar amounts. These, these people might all be on payment plans. They might have little intricacies to what their actual deal is, but notice 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. A lot of these numbers are the same because they're going to be the package total for what someone is buying. That's going to be in a sales pipeline. Tracking a lead through the sales process. I have other videos on this channel around custom activities that you can watch and you'll see how those custom activities actually work alongside of this Kanban view of the sales process. But now let's look into my finance pipeline. So I've got all my statuses showing here on the screen for my finance pipeline. Let's first talk about what all of them are. I'm in an expected all time view, but we have initial payment. That's going to be your upfront dollars collected. So if you sell something for $10,000 and you can collect $5,000 upfront, then they pay maybe a thousand dollars a month for the next five months. The initial payment is going to be that initial order value, that average order value on the front end. So if I wanted to know what's the average amount of cash I collected on the front end for this product offering, I can look at $445,000, 246 deals. I can do 445,000 divided by 246. And I know I collect about $1,800 on the front end for every sale that I have. I have installment pending. I have installment missed or an overdue installment. I have an installment paid status. I have overdue installment loss. So this would be a missed installment where someone said, I'm not paying that. I've got recourse pending. If you have finance periods where you can have chargebacks or recourse, I do have a section for chargebacks. If there is ever a chargeback, look at that. None. We love that refund pending. And these are all going to be lost statuses as well. You have your loss, your active, your one, your lost or your gray, your active statuses or your orange, your one statuses or your green. They visualize obviously different inside of reporting inside of close.com. So make sure you're aware of what the actual status type is. So if we go into a leads profile here now on this profile for Caitlin here, I see in the sales 
pipeline, there's a $5,000 green status signed up. Once again, top line revenue. I know Caitlin was sold a $5,000 package. Then I see in my finance pipeline, $1,250 on the initial payment on 10.9. And then out into the future, we see that she has an installment on 1.8 on 2-8 and on 3-8. So when these dates come around on January 8th, fun fact, that's my birthday. How about that? On January 8th, expected finance pipeline. Let's not do all time. Let's do custom January 8th. Now remember, hopefully you have someone on your team doing this every single day. Boom, there's Caitlin. So January 8th comes around. I know I've got to collect 1250 from Caitlin. Or maybe I do it trailing. Maybe I look at the previous day because maybe Caitlin's payment could automate through the system and get paid later today. When I see Caitlin's payment come in, I'm simply just going to update it from installment pending to installment paid. Now, when you want to filter for a certain date range to see how many installments were collected for the cash that was made up for your business, you can do that. You can filter just for that initial date range. If you want to see what was the cash that was made up of initial payments, you can do that. If you want to see what installments are pending in the future, right? I want to see what installments are coming up. I don't know if this is going to work in this demo account, but let's see if anything in the future. Boom. Oh, one of Kaylin's. If I want to see what installments are pending or coming up for the month of March, I see that I have these two coming up. There's that installment paid that I just manually moved over. That's why that's showing there. Then you also have the ability for these overdue installments. Someone misses an installment. Go file that under overdue installment or installment missed. Now you have all the missed installments, all the people that have missed a payment sitting in one pipeline stage. It's really easy to know who you have to follow up with and check in with. Now they pay that installment, that installment missed. Maybe Caitlin missed her installment. We get in touch with her. She pays it. Boom, right over to installment paid we get in touch with caitlin she missed an installment and she's like yeah i'm not ever paying that ever again over to installment loss now we're starting to track the amount of money that we're missing in our pipeline that is uncollectible or you know our accounts receivable that we'll never see again this does take someone to sit inside of here and look at your payment processor and look inside of your pipelines. It does take awareness from your sales reps. We do automate a lot of this with custom activities, but it still takes someone to monitor. You're talking about your money here. You're talking about your cash. You're talking about like what is really going to give you a clear picture into your business here. So you don't want to mess this up and you do want to put eyes on it for 10, 15 minutes every single day, make sure it's being followed the right way. There unfortunately is no cool way for Stripe to really integrate with clothes or many of these payment processes to integrate. It gets really confusing confusing, clunky, complicated. If it's just a one-off payment, like you sell something for like $997 over a cart checkout, like a webinar, and you want to bring that into your close.com account with an automation, I recommend doing what we call a product pipeline. So let me come into this account here, go down to my settings, or maybe it just might be in here, a product pipeline where you can list out all the front end products that you sell. So I'll go into my statuses and pipelines. I'll go to my product pipeline. Maybe you sell an ebook, maybe you sell a free guide. Maybe you, you, know, you have a webinar sale. Make all of these one statuses. And if these are all the stuff, all the payments that you can collect based on like not having a sales team member involved, then just bring them in with Zapier into this pipeline, but separate it from your sales pipeline, which follows a lead through a sales process and your finance pipeline, which follows the money, the actual deal, the contract value through the sales process. Take a screenshot if you want of all of the finance statuses that are on my screen here. Initial payment, installment pending, installment paid, installment overdue, blacklisted, chargeback, refund pending, refund paid. Blacklisted would be someone that we remove from the program. We kick them out. Pretty harsh word, but it's what we call it. We want to track it as a metric. If you want to track it, make sure you make it a status in here and then you will be able to track it. But I hope this video was beneficial for you. I hope you can see where you can actually track money inside of close.com. It does take a little extra work and you do want to structure things the right way. I do recommend two different pipelines, depending on how your business is structured, but a sales pipeline and then a finance or a contract pipeline. And yeah, these statuses work great for that 10 minutes a day to sit inside of here to make sure everything's sitting inside the right stage. Checking the Stripe account, checking the bank account will be really, really helpful and will help your sales reps predict what kind of money they're making coming up. Their sales pipeline is going to predict future deals coming through that they need to close. And the finance pipeline will predict what amount of installments am I collecting next month? Helps that sales rep really find clarity on, on their paycheck, which is always helpful. That's going to be all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be releasing a lot more of these close.com how to's with real world case studies to go along with it. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next one.